Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the next part of the infection. I am Dr. Sharad Deshmukh from SS Jaiswal College, Arjuni Moore. In today's uh, lecture, we are going to study the modes of transmission of infection. In this part, we will see the different modes of transmission of the infection. So these all uh, modes mainly includes the various modes that is the contacts second one is inhalation third is ingestion fourth one inoculation fifth one is the vector sixth is the congenital and the seventh one iatrogenic and laboratory infection now we'll see one by one the different modes of the infection let us first go to the first mode of infection that is the contacts so here it clearly indicate the term contact and in contacts there are mainly two parts direct and indirect in direct contact there is a direct contact of the individual that can transmit the infection the best example is the sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis which is caused by the trypanoma pallidum or the gonorrhea which is caused by the N gonorrhea and these diseases are spread by the direct body contact and that is the more known as the direct contact while the second mode is the indirect contact so it occurs through contacts with the inanimate objects like toys clothing pencils and these are termed as the fomites so these inanimate objects are referred as the fomites and these fomites get contaminated by the pathogen from a person who is suffering from the infection or the disease and if the same one is utilized by the other person like pencils or the face towels that can transmit the infection here the best example we have mentioned the pencil can transmit the diphtheria among the children if the face towels is utilized by the two different persons which is utilized first by the infected person and then by the normal person that can transmit the disease trachoma that is referred as the indirect contact now we'll come to the next mode that is the inhalation as far as the inhalation is concerned it is mainly concerned with the diseases transmitted by the respiratory to the respiratory tract and here the patient which spread the microbes in air while sneezing coughing or the speaking so these microorganisms will get enter into the environment and during this period if anybody comes in contact with that person that will spread in the form of the droplet and this respiratory infections like influenza or tuberculosis is transmitted by the inhalation of this particle which are spread in the environment particularly in this case now the best example is the pandemic disease presently the covid 19 which is mainly spread by the inhalation mode of the transmission in this case the pathogen in the dust or the droplet which is having the diameter 1 to 10 micron that is known as the droplet nuclei they get suspended in the air and act as a source of the infection and if the person in come in contact with these particles which are suspended in air that get inhaled by the person and will transmit the infection the next one is the ingestion mode of the transmission ingestion mode of the transmission is related to the diseases to the digestive tract so in case of the ingestion mainly the intestinal infections are acquired by the ingestion of the food that is the contaminated food or the drink or the use of the contaminated water for drinking purpose and this may get contaminated by the different pathogens and if it is used if suppose the water which is contaminated with the the vibrio cholerae is consumed that will cause the waterborne disease known as the cholera or they can also cause the disease typhoid which is contaminated with the water similarly the food may get contaminated with the microorganism and the, it is responsible for the food poisoning or it may contaminated by the handborne 
which is uh, carrying the food and that is responsible for the dysentery so that food may contaminated by the person who who handle the food may have the infection with the dysentery bacilli and that can transmit the dysentery that is the bacillary dysentery so the diseases which are transmitted by the ingestion either by the consumption of the contaminated food contaminated drink or mainly the by the contaminated water among these the most common are the diarrhea dysentery and the cholera and the food poisoning these are the best examples now next mode of the transmission is the inoculation mode here the term itself mention inoculation that microorganisms get inoculated so the pathogens in some cases get directly inoculated into the tissues when you are having any the wound that get contaminated with the organisms from the environment particularly the best example is the tetanus one which is caused by the contamination of the wound by the spores which gets implanted in the deep wound the spores of the clostridium tetani which may be present in the soil and that will infect the wound and will able to cause the disease tetanus similarly the viral disease like rabies virus sorry the viral disease called called as the rabies is caused by the rabies virus where it get deposited subcutaneously by the bite of the dog which is already rabid one and that will inoculate the microorganism in the wound deep wound and will result into the rabies the next example is some infections may be the iatrogenic that is by mode of inoculation when we are the particularly the syringes or the surgical equipment which are employed may be contaminated and that can transmit the infection like hiv or hepatitis b by the mode of the inoculation and it is acquired in the hospital that is uh, by the hospital procedures that's why it is referred as the iatrogenic type of the infection by the inoculation mode the another most important another mode is the insect some diseases may be transmitted by insect and that are known as a vector so the mainly it include the blood sucking insect they may transmit the pathogen and diseases are called as the arthropod borne diseases the diseases which are transmitted by the vectors or the insect in this case the insects such as the mosquitoes ticks mites flies fleas and lice that are able to transmit the infections and these are called as the vectors so vector means the insect which are able to transmit the infection these vectors may be of the two types one is the mechanical vector and second is the biological vector here the term itself suggests the mechanical vector here the transmission may be mechanical that is when the particularly the house flies that sit on the any contaminated material like the feces that can transmit the infection where they comes in contact with the food so the best example is the dysentery or the typhoid bacilli by the domestic fly which they get contaminate the food uh, the organism get on the uh, wings or on the body of the insect that will transmit the infection to the food and that can transmit ultimately the disease secondly the second one is the biological vector first we will know what is the biological vectors the pathogens which multiplies in the body of the vector undergoes its part of life cycle in it and such vectors are called as the biological vectors the your best example is the edis aegypti mosquito which is able to transmit the yellow fever anopheles mosquito that is the female anopheles that is able to transmit the malaria here the best one you should remember that the pathogen multiply and a pa they pass a part of its life cycle in the vector that's why it is referred as the biological vector the interval period between the time of entry of the pathogen into the vector and the vector becoming infective is called as extrinsic incubation period that means when the pathogen are sucked by the particularly the like the anopheles mosquito from the blood and till it become infective to transmit the infection that period is referred as the extrinsic incubation period 
some insect may act as a reservoir of the host that means they will carry the pathogen in their body and such as the ticks in the relapsing fever and the spotted fever they may get deposited always in the body of the particular insect and they may act as a reservoir host so this was the mode of the transmission the next is the congenital mode of the transmission in this case the pathogens are able to cross the placental barrier some pathogens are able to cross all the pathogens are not able to cross the placental barrier and this can be transmitted by the congenital mode so they infect the fetus in utero and that transmission is referred as the vertical transmission so that can cross the placental barrier and from mother to fetus that infection can be transmitted that is referred as the vertical transmission and this may lead to the abortion miscarriage or the stillbirth and the live infants may born with a manifestation of the disease for example the congenital syphilis which is due to trypanosoma pallidum if the mother is infected with the t pallidum she is having the syphilis that the newborn infants may have this infection that is referred as the congenital syphilis similarly the intrauterine infection with rubella that may interfere with the organogenesis and lead to the congenital malformation in some infection there is a malformation even though there is a newborn one with the malformations and these are the diseases which are transmitted by crossing the placental barrier and it is called as the tetragenic infection that is particular by the rubella caused by the rubella the next mode of the transmission is the iatrogenic or the laboratory mode the we have already seen the earlier the infection may sometimes transmitted during the various clinical procedures like lumbar puncture catheterization or the administration of the injection if they are contaminated earlier in the hospital and that can transmit during these various procedures while in the advanced method of the trans uh, treatment like dialysis organ transplant surgery and exchange transfusion increase the risk of the iatrogenic infection so due to the these procedures the risk has been increased as compared to the earlier one the laboratory procedures that can also transmit the infection because for the laboratory purpose we have to collect the various clinical specimens while collecting the specimens if the contaminated needles are used or if they get contaminated that can transmit the infection and that can lead to the disease thank you very much